mapping the analogy between the matrix story and the thought experiment of Rene Descartes' meditation. So mapping the matrix analogy. Neo, that's the Keanu Reeves character, is the ego. So Neo is the ego. The I, the mind, or the soul uh, is also what Descartes thought of this as a thinking substance in that Aristotelian sense. And, and always keep in the back of your mind that Descartes is writing his meditations um, in part, you know, like in terms of academic thinking of his audience, he's thinking of the Aristotelian scholastics and he's trying to speak their lingo but disrupt Aristotelian scholasticism. And, um, and notice that the mind and the soul are the same thing. And I, and I spoke about that, I think, when I covered Aristotle. So that, that's important to keep in mind. Uh, but the mind or the soul, especially the way that uh, Descartes jumps us into this, is the I. It's like, it's, it's the seat of perception. And, I'm, and, and if we're thinking about the pineal gland as being the seat of perception, you know, we're kind of looking out from the center of the brain through the neurons to the eyes and seeing things, but also through the neurons to the ears and hearing things, and through the neurons to the hands and feeling things, et cetera, et cetera. And so he wants to think of that pineal gland as, as the core of, of the perceptual world where everything kind of comes together. And one reason I think why he picked out the pineal gland is that, so why the pineal gland is because the pineal gland is like right in the center of the brain and it's one of the structures, maybe the only, well, maybe it's one of the structures in the brain uh, that is not split in half, that is not really half here and half there. Most of the brain is, is perfectly separated into two halves. The pineal gland is actually, you know, structurally, uh, there's no deep ridge or division in it. <clears throat> Okay, so it seems to be like, you know, like a kind of central node. Okay, just looking at the gross, you know, structure. Um, now, the matrix in the film, The Matrix, what the, matri the word matrix refers to is that virtual reality. Uh, and, and what's now, what's interesting about the matrix, remember when he woke up in the pod, uh, he looked around and there were just thousands and thousands of pods and they're all plugged in. And the idea here is that they're all plugged into the same virtual reality. So instead of us like in Zoom, instead of us all being plugged into the Zoom, to a Zoom session or uh, yeah, if we're thinking like we're on Zoom live with other people, instead of being plugged into the Zoom uh, session through our computer, we're plugged into a virtual reality that we all share through these brain plugs. So, so it's a shared virtual reality space. And so the matrix then in this virtual sense is the world that we perceive and that we even share perception of. Um, and that will come up 
That will be significant actually a little bit later. Descartes is not really concerned about sharing the virtual experience, but that quickly evolves into a discussion based upon what Descartes um, is concerned with. Descartes is more concerned about just being a lone soul, so to speak, who's being uh, effed with by this malicious demon or whatever, and having a false reality fed to it through the perceptions. And so Neo is the ego, the matrix is the ego's perception, which may be false in Descartes' meditation. And the real world in, in the movie, The Matrix, the real world that's outside of the matrix, the pods and the, the weird submarine thing that he gets picked up into, um, the real world is the real world uh, in, in Descartes' uh, meditation. So on the left, we have the world of the matrix. On the right, we have the world or, or the, the setup of, of Descartes' meditation. In both cases, the real world is the real world, and that's the real question. How do we know that we're perceiving the real, how do we know when we wake up? How do we know we're not dreaming? And notice when Neo in the film, uh, when he wakes up in the pod, he's waking up for the first time. He's been asleep his whole life. So, uh, so there's a lot of there's a lot of philosophical mileage that we can get out of the Matrix story, uh, and a lot of it maps very nicely onto what Descartes says. And in Western philosophy, this Eurocentric Western philosophy, uh, we go back to this this meditation of Descartes over and over again. Okay, so be thinking about how do how does the film, The Matrix, match up with what Descartes is saying, and make sure you get that straight. And once you have that straight, then we can keep on using this, um, this matrix analogy to unfold all the complications. Because again, I think because we are familiar with virtual reality, it makes it a little easier to understand. Okay. All right, so I'll leave that at that.